Welcome back, everybody. Um, our next speaker is Nadia Peek. Um, she is a postdoc at the Center for Bits and Atoms at uh, MIT Media Lab. Uh, she works on digital fabrication, networking protocols for machine control, digital materials, machines that make machines, and rapid prototyping. So a little bit of everything. Um, in her spare time, she volunteers at the Fab Lab, a global network of digital fabrication facilities where anyone can make almost anything. Um, she is also one of our Hackaday Prize judges. Please join me in welcoming Nadia to the stage. Hi. Um, okay, so since this is a Hackaday conference, I figured I wouldn't go into too much detail about uh, specifics of things I can do because you can just read about those. Um, but I'm going to tell you a story about something that happened uh, last August when we had a uh, conference in Shenzhen in China and uh, a lot of things went terribly wrong, but a lot of things also went terribly well, all things considered. Um, and <clears throat> and, uh, and so that, that's, that's more or less what this talk is going to be about, how things can go terribly wrong and you can rescue them anyway. Uh, but just for some background, uh, I teach uh, at MIT the class how to make something that makes almost anything, uh, which is about machine building. So these are machines that either I or students of mine built in the class, liquid handlers, like line following things, uh, milling machines. Um, and as a prerequisite for that class, you have the class how to make almost anything, um, which is just about digital fabrication, which could easily be taught over here uh, with all of those uh, machines that are set up. And some of the previous machines um, that I've built that maybe some of you have seen. This is, for example, a pop-up 3D printer milling machine uh, hybrid. This was, a, this was a milling machine made out of cutting boards for doing um, circuit boards. Uh, this, is a, uh, this was a four-axis, you know, why do you want more than three-axis control? So that you can make objects that say hell on one side and yeah on the other. Um, and so, uh, <laughs> This, this, is a, this is a reconfigurable machine parts that you can, uh, you can configure to do different things. So you could make it a four axis hot wire cutter, which is what it's set up to be here, or uh, you could have it be any other any of things. Um, and so the, I just finished my PhD in July. I defended on July 31st. And the topic of my dissertation was on how can you really quickly, rapidly prototype rapid prototyping machines. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so part of it was instead of just doing um, modularity at the software layer, can we also have modularity at the hardware layer, not just um, in with network controls for all of the things that you want to be moving around, but also uh, the mechanical parts themselves. Can they be built up out of modules that you can easily control? Um, and so instead of saying, I'm designing machines, you can say this is just one instantiation of a machine um, in the same way that in object-oriented software you have instantiations of classes. Uh, and so if you want to know much more about that, uh, you can uh, read more my dissertation, which is riveting, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, and part, of, part of making that accessible or part of making that, uh, that object-oriented hardware rapid prototyping of rapid prototyping machines accessible, um, together with James Coleman, I built this uh, cardboard construction kit for these modules um, that you can then stack together and configure. Um, and then here's just, maybe I'll put this here. Um, so here's a, a video. Um, of, a, of it, kind of the idea and how people might configure it. So this is a workshop I guess I could have run today, but. Um, so it's made out of cardboard, which I think is really undervalued material for machine building because it's uh, really light and really cheap, um, but actually also surprisingly stiff if you laminate it. This is the network control system. Uh, and uh, this is, by taking advantage of the precision of the laser cutter and pre-scoring all the lines, you can get um, highly precise packaging, which then uh, aligns your motors. Um, so these are the kinds of machines that maybe you could configure with it. And then this we taught in a machine building class for Fab Academy, which is a class taught throughout um, Fab Labs in, uh, I guess, the whole world now. Um, and these are all machines that other people built with, uh, uh, with this kit. 
Um, they had to source their cardboard locally, which is why they didn't all have colorful cardboard. This is like a, three, uh, a 3D scanner using an iPhone. Um, just moving the axes was exciting for a lot of people. This is a coffee stirring machine. Uh, this is a uh, light show. This is a five axis, uh, actually no, this is four axis, but the, the students that are, that are taking this machine building class don't really think about whether or not it's harder or easier to do five or four axis. Um, so they just add axes willy-nilly because it's easy, which I think is cool. Here's a lathe. Uh, here's a precision ketchup extrusion machine, <laughs> obviously from Japan. Um, it's a cocktail mixing machine. Oh, you know, when people can start ad hoc or like assembling machines, you realize that people really think food and alcohol is important. That's <laughs> the theme of a lot of the machines that people uh, built. It's another one from Japan. It's like they got all of the electronics and like motion working and like the part they didn't do very well was attaching the knife to the machine. Okay, that's dangerous. But there, and so there's like a lot of different, um, a lot of different things in it and it was a popular, it was kind of a popular project and kit and all of these fab labs are coming together or they come together once a year at the fab lab conference. Um, here's another cool, this one is five axis. And, uh, and so you have 50-ish countries coming together in this conference and uh, all these people and, 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 uh, and they're like, okay, well, if it's starting to become so easy for us to make machines, maybe the theme of the Fab Lab conference, this is a bleach, a bleach dyeing t-shirt making machine. Uh, yeah, this is a uh, sand gardening machine that was made in Ohio. And in Italy, they also made a sand gardening machine. Who knew that Zen sand gardening by robotics was such a uh, underserved application? Um, and so Fab 12, the conference, uh, was in the beginning of August, and I defended on July 25th. So you can see how, like, in terms of preparation and timing, this was a little bit difficult for me. Um, and so they're like, oh, but we really think it would be great especially considering like there's going to be a big show in the municipal building and if we could make lots and lots of machines and make sure that uh, everyone gets excited about making machines and the future of manufacturing and rapid blah blah disrupt something or other. And I was like, okay, well, sounds good, except that I don't really have any time um, to help you with, the, with uh, sourcing any of these parts. And so if you want to be running this workshop in Shenzhen, sounds good, but uh, I can't really help with... Uh, with the prep, like I'll show up and teach it, but these are all of the materials that you need. Everything is uh, everything is open source, which would be relatively straightforward. These are vendors that I've used before. Just please uh, make sure that it it, uh, it all works out well. Well, that was a big mistake. <laughs> I showed up, um, and the conference. How many of you guys have been to Shenzhen? Akiva. Okay, it's actually not that many of you. It's such a maker destination, you guys. <laughs> um, so. This is at the Sheraton Hotel, which is like an unreasonably fancy hotel. I don't know why it was there. Um, everything is like gold. There's these big eagles at the door. Uh, and they spent so much money on like TV crews and die cast enameled badges for everyone. And, and so I show up and I'm like, so where are my motors and my cardboard and my electronics? And they were like, what? <laughs> so there was nothing there. They wanted me, and it was even like the theme of the conference that we were supposed to be making these machines the entire time. And they were just like, we thought that, you know, you would just do it. And we didn't know that all of those things on that spreadsheet that you sent us were actually required. <laughs> and I was like, all right, the, this, is, this is going to be really bad. Um, and they had also, not skimped on the like advertising and PR budget, so there were all these TV show crews there, and they all wanted to film stuff, uh, and 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 there was just a, there wasn't there wasn't anything really there to show them. I hadn't even brought anything with them, uh, and even though I defended on July 25th, I still had to submit the final revision of my dissertation. So that was like just a minor thing that was looming over this entire uh, week. Um, so, however. Sheraton is near um, kind of a mall, a weird upscale mall called Coco Park. Uh, and three subway stops further, though, you can get to Hua Chang Bay, which is where they sell weird, janky cell phones that also look like packs of cigarettes. Um, 
and also any kind of LED that you might want or a, a lot of different connectors. There's like a um, Seed Studio has released a helpful map to help you get around in uh, Shenzhen to figure out where to buy different things that you might want. So there's like a, the Mingtang Digital Mall, which we, where you buy cell phones. There's like a tool market. Um, there's an LED market. Uh, there's a there's all this uh, there's all this useful stuff conveniently at a, a subway a subway ride away. And then this is just a Google Maps search for the word factory um, around Shenzhen. So you know I was like, okay, well of all the places that this could have happened to me. I guess this is not a terrible situation. And also like going to a marketplace and instead of buying like vegetables, buying resistors is actually kind of fun. <laughs> and so uh, the, uh, um, instead, of, uh, instead of being really, really upset, actually I was really upset, got really angry, but, uh, uh, but taking it all in stride, in classical Shenzhen style, what we decided to do is to start a small company. So uh, the, uh, Network communication protocol that I briefly showed you in the beginning is called Pi Gestalt, and so uh, we decided to call the company Gestalt Solutions Co. Limited. Our capabilities are your possibilities. <laughs> and uh, we went down to the uh, marketplace, and the first thing that we bought was a reflow oven. Uh, we also we also bought a bunch of. Uh, I think we spent about um, four hundred four hundred dollars U.S. and bought. Uh, a reflow oven, we bought soldering irons, we bought um, a bunch of different kind of tables, we bought all of the cardboard that we needed. Uh, we had to cut it down uh, to make sure it fit in the laser cutter. We convinced, uh, in, at, at this conference, there were a bunch of vendors that, were, uh, that, had, um, that had their wares set up. Um, and so we're like, so, you know, you're demoing this Trotec laser cutter. If it's really so great, can we use it? <laughs> uh, and so uh, we... Uh, we had, to, we had to explain to them a little bit that we actually knew what we were doing. They didn't have to uh, hold our hands the entire time. We also uh, used a, uh, just because we could, we used a funny CAD software written by someone from my lab, Matt Keeter, um, to design bearings. We co-opted all of the 3D printers that were, uh, that were in the marketplace to be able, or that were in the, in the uh, vendor area to be able to print the bearings that we needed. Um, we had... Uh, uh, one of our friends who's a sourcing agent in, in Shenzhen buy all of the electronics for us. So if you ever go buy electronics in the marketplace in Shenzhen, what you can expect is the price that's under the like 10,000 amount um, on DigiKey is the amount that you pay like for one or two parts when you're in the marketplace. So that's kind of fun. So you can be like, oh yeah, I'll take, uh, I'll take some RS-485 communication chips and uh, just for fun, like add on these other things, then you pay 70 cents and you leave. It's kind of cool. But uh, uh, the, uh, the Gestalt Solutions Co. Limited also had other backup options. And so since there were all these people that we knew that were coming to uh, uh, the conference who hadn't actually left yet, we told them all, this is the bill of materials that we need. Like, if you guys have any of these things lying around, then just like stuff them in your suitcase and give them to us so that we can build these parts. Uh, and so we had all of these like supply chains filtering into Shenzhen, probably things that were made in Shenzhen that were coming back to Shenzhen. So we had uh, we had a lot of uh, at the end we actually had way more electronics than we really needed. Um, and it turns out that you can get a uh, a silk screen a, a solder paste um, screen made in less than 24 hours in Shenzhen. Um, and also, you can buy solder paste, and because of like kind of the looseness of branding and copyright in Shenzhen, when you buy solder paste, it comes in a Tiffany's bag. <laughs> it's the, the kind, of, it's the, uh, the kind of metal that a girl really needs. Um, and uh, so we didn't buy a pick and place. That was a little bit outside of our budget and setup, unfortunately. So we did end up placing most of the parts by hand. But then uh, we got a yield of uh, ninety. 95% on the boards that we fabbed, um, so that was pretty cool. Um, we set up a uh, we set up a testing. This is just a uh, one of my students at MIT who happened to be in China for summer vacation, and I was like, "Hey, you doing anything? <laughs> Do you feel like flashing a hundred boards and then running this test suite on them?" Um, he was like, "Sure, I've never done that before." Um, so. <laughs> So then we started uh, that part of the fabrication process. Also, I should mention, we ordered the PCBs and they also came in about 24 hours. Um, 
They're a four layer uh, with solder mask and silk screen and everything. It was really kind of amazing to realize. And while this is all going on, it's not like the only thing that we're doing. We're also the people who have organized the conference. So whatever Sophie and Chris and, uh, and Mike are doing right now, we're also doing all of those things. Like, oh, like you don't want to have your, you don't have your PowerPoint ready speaker on your USB stick yet. Um, well, just go talk to these people and hold on for a second because I have to go take the boards out of the reflow oven. <laughs> um, but you know, the production line went pretty well. Uh, this is a, a part of it. And then this is the uh, people that started putting together the uh, cardboard, the cardboard frames for the machine parts. Um, and uh, within four days, uh, we had actually all of the machine parts ready to start constructing uh, machines for the exhibition. But that's when also things started getting really crazy in terms of there were other things that hadn't gotten totally well. Uh, gone totally well in, in the organizing of that conference in Shenzhen. But we did find some time uh, to plug our product uh, with the Wall Street Journal who was visiting. But we weren't actually installing the machines at um, the Sheraton. We were installing the machines at Shenzhen Civic Center, which is this funny looking building, uh, which is also where the government, uh, the, the, conference, uh, the conference was held, the main part of the conference was held in the same room that their parliament sits in, which I thought was kind of weird. Um, so we need to bring all of the machines to this building, less than two kilometers from where they were, um, but we're not allowed to bring them ourselves because they have to get checked out to make sure that they're not bombs or whatever. And uh, in that process, all of these machine parts that we built suddenly went missing. Um, so there are all these crates that were being shipped into that building and, and we couldn't find uh, the parts that we needed or any of the things that we built. We're like, where is everything? So here's, uh, here's Bunny Huang holding up uh, David Craner as we look through everybody else's boxes to figure out um, where all of our stuff went. Um, so that was a disaster. Uh, and then finally the morning of the conference at 4 a.m. approximately, we finally find our parts which have been put inside other boxes that are labeled um, Trotec Laser. So Trotec is a great company, they let us use our laser cutters, but they did cause us some grief. Um, and then we started assembling all kinds of machines, uh, even though the grand opening was supposed to be at 8 a.m. But luckily we're very good at making machines and we made like about 15 of them. Uh, and they did, uh, they did, I was hoping that we would have that entire time to like hack new cool machines and instead they just did similar stuff that uh, um, we, uh, we had already done. So this is a machine that um, took a picture of you and then did a trace outline and then would draw your portrait with magic marker. Uh, and, uh, and I was like, oh, that's kind of lame. But it turns out everybody thinks that even lame machines are cool. It doesn't really matter in this exhibition sense. And by then, you know, we hadn't really slept at all and we were very tired, so we stopped taking good pictures of anything. Um, and so the moral of the story is, if you make sure that everything works in the end and you pull it all off, no one's ever known that anything was wrong and you don't really necessarily get any credit for it. Um, which is why it's so great that I can give you this talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then uh, after the show started and was taken over by um, the exhibition managers who told us to go home and take showers, we promptly disbanded as a um, solutions company. Uh, and uh, it was a it was a eight day very productive um, run. But then it was time it was time to go. And as you know, some of the Chinese marketplace signs tell you it's not necessarily in your best interest to, uh, to stay in the dinosaur instantiation that you were in. Um, and so here are just some more uh, machines. Just kidding, not more machines. So these are some of the other fab labs that also made machines that same year. Uh, that uh, I just figured I could show at the end of this talk. But that was it. That's all I had to tell you guys. <laughs> this is a cardboard tube cutting machine. I thought it was very cool. It only cuts PVC tubes. But imagine the possibilities of one-off machine precision. So great. 
Anyway. I don't know why it doesn't have any sound. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how to get my mouse there. Thanks very much, Nadia. One more round of applause for her. That was awesome. Great.